Hey everyone, this lesson is on the vitamin folate. In this lesson, we're going to talk about where we get folate, how we metabolize and absorb it, and why we need it. So folate is also known as vitamin B9. It is an essential water-soluble vitamin. Folate stores are quite variable between individuals. Generally speaking, we can last about three weeks to six months if we were not to have any more folate. So total body folate stores are 0.5 to 20 milligrams. So again, quite variable. Folate is acquired from our diet, and we get it from leafy green vegetables, so we can get it from broccoli, different types of lettuce, and those types of leafy greens. We can also get it from fortified foods. So in North America, many products like cereals and grains are fortified with folate, so you can get it in breads and maybe some cereal for breakfast. You can also get it from nuts and meats as well. So those are the sources of folate we generally uh, have to get folate in our diet. So how do we absorb and metabolize folate? So we ingest folate in a food like a leafy green vegetable. It enters into the stomach and then eventually transverses into the proximal duodenum. Folate is a water-soluble vitamin, so it is actually absorbed in this proximal small intestine, so the duodenum. So we absorb it in the duodenum. The duodenum is where we absorb the thick elements. So thick, F for folate, I for iron, C for calcium. The bioavailability of folate depends on its source. And dietary folate, we actually only can access about 50% of it. Whereas if we were to take a folic acid supplement, we could actually get 100% bioavailability from that just because of the change in structure. Folate is metabolized in the liver, and because it is a water-soluble vitamin, we excrete it in our urine. So generally speaking, we don't have to worry too much about ingesting too much folate because we will essentially just excrete it in our urine. So why do we need folate? Folate is utilized in the folate cycle. That's pretty easy. And it is a precursor for formation of tetrahydrofolate, or THF. Folate is in the name tetrahydrofolate, so that's again pretty easy to remember. So folate, cycle, and tetrahydrofolate. Where it gets more complicated is the several processes we use tetrahydrofolate in. Tetrahydrofolate is required for purine and pyrimidine synthesis, so we use those bases to make nucleic acids. We also use tetrahydrofolate to make some amino acids and to make nucleoproteins, so essentially just combinations of nucleic acids and proteins. And we can also need tetrahydrofolate to make catecholamines. And interestingly, folate is used to increase the metabolism of formic acid, which is a degradative byproduct of methanol ingestion. So methanol toxicity can actually be treated with folate. So if we actually give folate to individuals who ingested methanol, it actually helps to metabolize that toxic intermediate formic acid. So we're going to look at a quick schematic of how folate is used in our body to do those processes we just talked about. So if we were to ingest folate from our diet, folate is acted on by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase, DHFR, to make dihydrofolate. And then dihydrofolate reductase again acts on dihydrofolate to make tetrahydrofolate. So this is the one you want to remember, tetrahydrofolate. So tetrahydrofolate is then processed by enzymes to make N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. And then N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate is acted on by thymidylate synthase to essentially convert DUMP to DTMP. And then this is where we can make the pyrimidine. So the DUMP, DTMP are for pyrimidine synthesis. So this is why we need folate for pyrimidine synthesis. Now the N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate can then either be used for pyrimidine synthesis or can be diverted into another pathway to form N10 formal tetrahydrofolate, which can then be used in purine synthesis. So this is where we can see the requirement of tetrahydrofolate and folate for pyrimidine synthesis and purine synthesis. Now we can also have another diverted pathway for N5 and 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate where it can be processed into 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which can itself then be diverted into what we call the activated methyl cycle. The activated methyl cycle 
involves homocysteine, vitamin B12, methionine, and S-adenosyl methionine, or SAM. So what's important to recognize here is that methionine synthase, or MS here, takes homocysteine, utilizes vitamin B12 and 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate to make methionine. So this is one of the amino acids we talked about, the amino acid synthesis that folate is involved in. And then essentially methionine gets converted to S-adenosyl methionine or SAM. And SAM is important because we use this in catecholamine synthesis. So this is the few ways we use folate. Pyrimidine synthesis, purine synthesis, and catecholamine synthesis. So that was a quick overview of this pathway. If you want more information on the enzymes and the regulators of the pathway, please check out my lesson on this specific topic. So now that we know why we need folate, what's the dietary intake? How much folate do we actually need? So folate has several different recommended daily allowances depending on the age of the patient. So folate intake depends on the age of the patient. So at one to three years of age, the recommended daily allowance of folate is 150 micrograms per day. For ages four to eight, it's 200 micrograms per day. For ages nine to 13, it's 300 micrograms per day. And then 13 years and older, so teenagers, adults, older adults, all require 400 micrograms per day. Now there are two special circumstances where we wanna change this. In pregnancy, so pregnancy, you want to have 600 micrograms of folate per day. And then there's even a special case within pregnancy is that in a high-risk pregnancy for neural tube defects or NTDs, neural tube defects, if the woman has had a previous pregnancy with a neural tube defect or she has a family history of neural tube defects or takes any medications that increase the risk of neural tube defects like some anticonvulsants, you want to use 4,000 micrograms per day or 4 milligrams per day. So it's a quite a jump. 600 micrograms per day starter on 4,000 micrograms per day. There are different categories of risk some require only 1,000, but for high risk, you want to use 4,000. And we're going to talk a bit more about this in a folate deficiency lesson. And then for pregnancy, you want to take the higher dosing. So if they have normal risk for neural tube defects, you want to take 600 micrograms per day, and you want to supplement one to three months prior to pregnancy and up to at least 12 weeks of gestation because this is around the time when the neural tube closes. So for nor normal risk, generally speaking, we say one month prior to pregnancy, start supplementing. If it's a high risk for neural tube defects, start at least three months prior to pregnancy where you want to have high doses of the supplement of folate. And again, up to 12 weeks of gestation. And I said there's two special circumstances. The second one is lactation. So even after pregnancy, even after the delivery of the baby, if the mother is lactating and breastfeeding, we want to have a little bit higher folate intake than usual. So we want 500 micrograms per day until breastfeeding is completed. So to summarize what we learned in this lesson, folate is an essential water-soluble vitamin and it is vitamin B9. We get it from our diet, and dietary sources include the dark green leafy vegetables like broccoli, spinach, romaine, lettuce, kale. We can also get it from nuts, meats, and uh, fortified foods like grains and cereals. It is absorbed in the duodenum, so the first part of the small intestine. Remember, the thick FIC elements are absorbed in the duodenum, so folate, iron, and calcium. Folate is necessary because it's involved in synthesis of purines, pyrimidines, methionine, and catecholamines. The recommended daily allowance of folate is according to the age of the patient. So for ages 1 to 3, it's 150 micrograms. For ages 4 to 8, it's 200 micrograms. For ages 8 to 13, it's 300 micrograms. And everybody older than 13 gets 400 micrograms per day. And the only exceptions to this are pregnancy and lactation. Pregnancy and lactation require higher amounts. Pregnancy, you re require 600 micrograms per day if you have a normal 
risk of neural tube defects. If you have a high risk of neural tube defects, then you have to have a higher amount, up to 4,000 micrograms per day. And in lactation, you need about 500 micrograms per day. So if you want to learn more about what happens during folate deficiency, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.